Hi, everyone. My name is Charlotte Garcia. I'm coming to you from the Cambridge Hearing Group, and I'm going to talk to you today about translating the panoramic ECAP method to the clinic. So cochlear implants, as many of you will know, are surgically implanted neuroprosthetic devices that provide auditory perception to a person with severe to profound hearing loss. There are over a million of these devices in use worldwide. More than 2,000 are implanted each year in the UK alone. And most people obtain good speech perception with their devices and some enjoy music like this little girl on the right. Um, they are arguably the most successful neuroprosthetic in existence today. They bypass the outer and the middle portions of the auditory system and consist of two parts. So there's um, an external part that consists of a speech processor and has a microphone for recording sound. And it communicates with an internal part um, that has a magnet and a receiver and also connects to an electrode array that is implanted inside the cochlea during a surgical operation. This allows for direct electrical stimulation of the neural population in the cochlea using these electrodes that are represented in white. Um, one of the things that we know about cochlear implant users is that they vary a lot, both in their hearing pathology and their speech perception they're able to obtain with their implant. And one of the things that impacts this is the electrode neuron interface. And there are two primary factors affecting the electrode neuron interface that my research focuses on. The first is the health of the auditory nerve, so you might imagine a scenario where all uh, of the neural population along the length of the cochlea is very healthy, but there might also be patches of unhealthy neurons as represented in gray that don't respond as well to electrical stimulation. There's also the spread of electrical current. So if you're trying to stimulate electrodes close to a healthy patch of neurons, you might not need to increase the current very high in order to achieve a sound perception. Um, but if you're stimulating an electrode closer to unhealthy patches of neurons, you might need to increase the current in order to reach a patch of responsive neurons. And this can create overlap between um, the neural population stimulated by adjacent or nearby electrodes. So both of these factors interact with each other and they impact the efficiency of delivering auditory information to the nerves through the implant. And having a lot of overlap between adjacent channels is a little bit like blurring your, your auditory um, signal. So since there's great variation between patients, how do we characterize this? I do this using the panoramic keycap method. This is a method that measures the neural response to stimulation through electro various electrodes in the implant using ECAPs or electrically evoked compound action potentials. Um, you can do this on one electrode at a time, or you can do it in a combination of electrodes. And we do this for pairs of pulses for every combination of um, two electrodes within the cochlear implant. And we collect a data set that looks like um, the matrix on the left. Um, and we can import this data into an algorithm that estimates the relative contributions of current spread. Um, so for this particular, particular patient, it's wider at the apex than it is at the base. Um, and also the contribution of the neural responsiveness to the electrode neuron interface, and this can vary along the length of the cochlea. So we validated this method in a number of different ways. Um, uh, one of our first, um, one of our early publications uh, included a simulation of a localized area of reduced neural responsiveness. Um, and the PCAP algorithm was able to identify this in the correct location and attribute this, um, this manipulation to a difference in the neural responsiveness estimate and not to the current spread estimate. Um, there was another um, paper that we did in collaboration with Julie Ehrenberg's lab at Massachusetts Eye and Ear, where we were blurring uh, input current, so stimulating multiple electrodes at once. Um, and this was attributed to an increase in current spread uh, and not a change to the neural responsiveness. Um, and we were also able to assess differences in current spread between different cochlear implant electrode array types. So. Um, this, uh, with a large cohort of, of participants, showed that there were differences in current spread, particularly at the apex, for um, straight electrode arrays compared to precurved ones. 
Um, so we hope that with these validations in the future, we might be able to take someone's cochlea that looks a little bit like this with some not so healthy patches of neurons and might be stimulated in this kind of way where there's a lot of overlap between the neural population stimulated by adjacent electrodes. Um, measure the PCAP algorithm, uh, measure the PCAP data, use the algorithm outputs to inform um, which electrodes we might switch off, um, and then optimize the cochlear implant program for a particular um, patient that could bring, for instance, this little girl's auditory world into sharper focus. Um, however, the problem, one of the problems is that these measurements take quite a long time. Um, so in the standard clinical software, they can take up to 45 minutes. And we have developed a new method that we call SpeedCap that allows us to collect the, the data necessary in the cochlear platform in just eight minutes. But one of the issues with this is that it's not a user-friendly um, program. So it's run through a research interface and also through the command line and would not be appropriate to implement in the clinic as is. It's not user-friendly. It requires running executable files. It also requires MATLAB on the computer that you're, you're testing on to visualize the results and uses old um, cochlear hardware. Um, so um, we have developed a uh, new system called PCAP Online that is a web interface that has two primary functions. The first of these is a data acquisition tab that allows you to download parameter files that you could then import into Custom Sound EP, the Cochlear Corporation's clinical um, software, to collect the PCAP data in a clinical setting. So it doesn't require the, um, the command line function. Um, so this could be used in a clinical setting without any additional software, um, and it only requires an internet browser. Um, and the other part of this is that there is an analysis tab on the website. So this allows you to then um, import the collected PCAP data to the web application, and it will spit out the panoramic ECAP uh, results for you and give you estimates of current spread and neural responsiveness along the length of the array given the data that you, that you just collected. And again, this is a um, website, so it doesn't require you to um, have any additional software. So only requires an internet browser, can compute the PCAP algorithm results in the browser, and it allows for the data to be saved in CSV format for your own further analysis, as well as um, the uh, images that you see on the um, web page to be saved. So we hope that this could potentially bring us one step closer to implementing PCAP in a clinical setting. Um, and I would just like to thank all of my collaborators. Many people have been interested in PCAP, and so we've had a lot of data from lots of different labs, which is really fascinating. Um, and I'd like to thank my funders in my lab, um, and particularly the um, the Center for Integrative Neuroscience Discovery at Cambridge and the Medical Research Council that have funded this um, PCAP online translatable research in particular. And I'll take any questions uh, you may have. Thanks.